You're listening to the I'm Busy Being Awesome podcast with Paula Engebretson, episode number 240. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are talking about a concept that I have been thinking about a lot in my business over the last several months. And I've found that it's been a really effective lens for problem solving. And as I've been playing with it, I realized how impactful it can be more broadly for the ADHD brain as well, which is why we're talking about it today. So today we are looking at this game changing principle that's more than just a productivity strategy. It's really a mindset shift that can make huge waves in the lives of the ADHD brain. And this concept is the 80-20 rule or Pareto's principle. So for context, let's take a quick jump back in time to Italy in the late 19th century, shall we? <laughs> so this is where Vilfredo Pareto, who was an economist, made this powerful observation. And at least according to the popular anecdote, the observation started in his garden. So he noticed that approximately 80% of the peas that he was growing in his garden came from about 20% of the pea pods. So what would it look like to really tend to just that 20%? And this observation sparked his curiosity and eventually led him to start generalizing the principle first in pursuit of understanding wealth distribution, where he found that roughly 80% of Italy's land was owned by just 20% of the population. Now we take this and we fast forward to today and the 80-20 rule, again, also known as the Pareto principle, it has really evolved into this powerhouse concept that's no longer confined to the world of gardening or wealth distribution. It's now this lens through which we can view our tasks and our projects and our goals and our relationships. I mean, seriously, it's a really powerful mindset shift that can inform how we approach most situations in our lives, especially if we're feeling overwhelmed, overworked, or nearing burnout. Because it tells us that 20% of the things that we're doing or the things that we're focused on bring us 80% of the results. And this means that the inverse is also true. And this is the trap where many of us get caught. 80% of the things we're doing, which are often things like busy work, procrastinating, working, distractions generally, they bring in a mere 20% of the results we want. Okay. So again, 20% of the actions that we're doing bring in 80% of the results, often the results we want. And the inverse is also true. So today, what we're going to do is take a look at this seemingly simple ratio and the way that for adults with ADHD, the 80-20 rule can really be a lifesaver. It's no secret that we often grapple with prioritization and time management and how to know where to put our focus. And this rule acts almost like a compass, helping us pinpoint the tasks and the projects and the commitments that are actually going to have a big impact on our long game goals versus the ones that are more of a distraction. So whether you use this concept in your work life to help you identify the tasks and the projects that contribute the most to your goals, whether you use it in your relationships to help you recognize the people who bring the most joy and support into your life, or you use it for your hobbies to help you prioritize the activities that bring you the, the greatest sense of fulfillment and enjoyment. Whatever it is, this 80-20 rule can deliver quite a bit of data for us to work with and make some big impactful shifts in our lives. When we lean into the 80-20 rule, it not only helps us with increased productivity and reducing our overwhelm, but it also helps us create that much needed division between work and play because we're able to identify the work tasks, the priorities that we really want to focus on and get done so that we can make the biggest impact in the work we're doing and have greater time for the fun and the play that we want. Now, like any tool or concept that we talk about on this podcast, it's not a one size fits all solution. You know, no two ADHD brains are alike, no two people's situations are the same. So 
as we go through the different examples today, what I really encourage you to do is listen to the situations that apply to you, that stand out to you, and then just leave the rest, okay? Similarly, the 80-20 rule is a really powerful framework, but it's also not an exact science. It's not a rigid guideline. So when your brain starts getting worried, either thinking, oh my gosh, I have to start figuring out percentages of things. No, don't worry. <laughs> okay, it's just a general guideline. And we just want to kind of challenge the, the flexible thinking here. We want to allow the gray to come in and shine between the black and the white. It might be 70-30. It might be 90-10. It might be most of my time is spent here versus here. Okay, we're going to use this framework more like a North Star that's guiding us rather than turn-by-turn -turn instructions, okay? So we're going to use it as a general guideline and framework to understand what we're prioritizing and where we're putting our attention. So with all of that, let's dive in, starting with prioritization specifically, since this is a major obstacle for us ADHD brains. Then we're going to look at productivity more broadly, and then we're going to wrap it up with some general life areas where you might apply this concept to your life as well. So as you listen, make note of just one or two areas where you might consider the 80-20 rule in your life. Of all the ideas you hear, which one seems like a quick win or the one that would make the biggest difference in your life? Okay, choose one, choose two, lean into the application and see what happens. All right. So like I said, we're going to start with applying the 80-20 rule to prioritizing tasks because again this is especially challenging for those of us with ADHD brains. We have all stared at a long to-do list and felt that overwhelm sweep in. ADHD paralysis takes over. We have no idea where to start. This is where the 80-20 rule can come into play quite powerfully. It can help us zoom in on the most critical tasks and avoid drowning in the details and maintain our clarity. By identifying the tasks that fall within that magical 20%, we can make sure that we're putting our time and energy where it matters most. So to bring this to life, let's look at some actual examples, okay? So a classic example, prioritizing tasks from a long to-do list, okay? So let's say that you find yourself facing this daunting to-do list with tons of tasks and the sheer volume of all the things just makes your brain want to melt. We've all been here, okay? How do we apply the 80-20 rule in this type of situation? We can start by identifying the tasks that align most closely with your overarching goals or that have the potential for the greatest impact. Okay, so we can think about it through the lens of our long-term goals because it's likely that 80% of the things on your to-do list aren't really contributing to those long-game goals. It's only contributing maybe 20%, okay? And in fact, if you did this exercise, if you went through your to-do list and you highlighted the tasks that actually fell most closely in alignment with your priorities, with your goals this season, chances are there'd be about 20% of the things on your list highlighted. You could even try it if you wanted to. For example, maybe you go through the 15 or 20 things on your list for the day and you realize, okay, responding to these six emails in my inbox and completing the next step for the team project in Asana and reviewing the notes for my meeting that's happening tomorrow morning, those are the tasks that are the vital 20% for today. If I focus on these high impact tasks first, I ensure that I am addressing the most significant aspect of the workload, okay? And that's gonna ensure that we kick the right soccer ball down the field. Another example, let's say that you are managing bigger picture things, projects and work overload, that sort of thing. You're juggling multiple projects at work and the sheer volume of tasks across different initiatives has you spinning, right? You're kind of confused about where to start. You're frozen in indecision. You don't even know who you can ask to help you sort through it. So what do we do? How do we bring in the 80-20 here? Well, maybe we assess the projects and the tasks and we identify the ones that are going to contribute the most to your professional goals or the ones that have the highest impact on your team or your organization, or the ones that fall within the important and urgent category in your Eisenhower matrix, okay? So 
Maybe you think about the strategic goals of your company or the ones that have impending deadlines. You use that as your lens and then you find that in that list of all the projects, there's probably a small portion, again, probably about 20% that are likely to yield the majority of the positive incomes that your team or your company want. And this allows you to really allocate your time and your energy to those initiatives, to those projects that are going to make the most significant difference overall. All right, let's do one more example that's not work related. Let's say you're decluttering your house. Okay, we've all been here. Our house is kind of a disaster zone <laughs> and the thought of cleaning it up, decluttering, getting everything done all at once just, again, leaves your brain spinning. How do we apply the 80-20 rule here? Well, maybe you identify the few areas in your house, maybe one or two rooms where you spend the most time. And that's where you start because that 20% of the rooms is going to have the largest impact on your overall comfort, your overall level of ease, because those are the spaces where you spend most of your time. Or maybe you focus on one room and you do the same thing. You focus on your kitchen and decluttering the 20% of items that are most visible or have the greatest impact on your level of comfort in that one room. So maybe it's clearing the surfaces, clearing the countertops and the table and only addressing those high impact areas first. And by doing that, you create this noticeable improvement in the overall tidiness of the kitchen without feeling like you have to tackle every corner and inside the cabinets and inside the refrigerator and everything all at once. So those are some examples. What does this 80-20 rule look like in practice when we think about our long list of tasks and projects and commitments? What, what are the steps here? Well, step one is to take a good look at that to-do list of yours, okay? We are on a mission to find the tasks that actually align with your long game goals, okay? We want to choose the things that actually promise a powerful result that you want on the other side. Then step two, we're going to identify those vital few. These are the tasks that often fall within the 20%. So these are the high impact projects, the tasks that fuel your personal or professional growth. I will also offer, they're probably the things that we want to avoid, <laughs> right? The things we keep putting off. We tell ourselves we don't have enough time. We'll do it later. These are probably the high impact things. And then we get to step three, okay? Step three is about giving these vital few the time and the attention that they deserve, the time and the attention that they need. For those of you in We Are Busy Being Awesome or my one-on-one -on -one clients in Simply Awesome, this is our focus on the time budget, okay? So you can check that out in the portal on Podia or in the workbook if you want a refresher on that. But this is what step three is all about. We want to ensure that we are allocating enough time to these vital few within our daily and our weekly schedules. Because these tasks, these projects are the 20%. These are the items that are going to bring 80% of the results. So we want to make sure that we are setting aside our best time to do that. Yes, of course, we can also allow time in our time budget for the other 80%, right? All the other things. But we want to prioritize our best time for that 20%, for those most important things first. Because those are the items that truly move the needle in both our personal and professional lives, okay? Now, of course, if you want support in learning my proven ADHD-friendly approaches to really simple prioritization and creating a schedule that does work best for you and your brain and that honors your 20%, you will love We're Busy Being Awesome. I would love to have you join us. We're Busy Being Awesome is my small group coaching program. I designed it after working with hundreds of ADHD brains over the years, and I've packaged all of my best strategies and approaches in a proven framework. It's designed by an ADHD brain for an ADHD brain to help you focus on what matters, to get it done, and to actually enjoy the life that you have worked so hard to create. And throughout the program, you have weekly coaching and support with me. We get together on our small group call and we go through questions. We troubleshoot obstacles. We coach through any friction points to ensure that you are designing the specific ADHD toolkit that your brain needs to thrive, both at home and at work. 
and enrollment for the next cohort opens on February 27th. If you are listening to this podcast the day it comes out, that is tomorrow. It's here. Okay, we kick off our first call the week later on March 7th. So you can learn more and sign up at I'mBusyBeingAwesome.com slash group. I'm not going to offer the program again until the fall. So this is your time. Let's go. I'mBusyBeingAwesome.com slash group. So again, key area number one is to use the 80-20 rule when you are identifying what actually matters on your endless list of tasks and projects. Identify that 20% of the projects and tasks that will produce that 80% of the impact on your personal and professional goals. All right. Now, I want to expand a bit outward and consider as well how the 80-20 rule can help us to maximize our productivity more generally. And we're going to do this by leaning into our strengths. So we know that there is this potential for increased productivity when we can apply the 80-20 rule effectively. When we hone in on those high impact tasks, we can create significant progress toward our goals in less time, which yes, please. (laughs) And the game changer here that I don't think people talk about enough is that we want to focus on our strengths when we're doing this. This is really the crux of the matter. When we can spend the best part of our time doing what we are really good at and then delegating or deleting the rest, we can really shift things when it comes to effective productivity. And when I say delegating and deleting the rest, I know that sounds very black and white, like we only do the things we're good at and that's it. Of course, there's gray in between. I know we can't all delegate and delete everything that's not a strength, but using it as a general rule of thumb. So to put this into context, I'm going to give an example of how I have been using the 80-20 rule in my business for years and especially over the last few months. So as a business owner, I am always asking myself of all the things I do in my business, what are the activities that genuinely move the needle? What are the activities and the projects and the tasks that help me reach more people and get my clients amazing results? And once I identify those, I can ask myself, okay, how can I double down on those activities and either lighten up or potentially delete the ones that don't provide that? And when I think about (laughs) all of the different things that I do in my business, whether it's social media or writing newsletters, creating worksheets and templates and trainings and being a guest on other people's podcasts and coaching in other people's communities and managing my inbox and scheduling calls and creating new content and staying on top of the latest research, both in ADHD and the coaching space. I mean, (laughs) this list is huge. There are a ton of things that I could be doing each day. And if I don't know the items that make the biggest impact, if I don't know my 20%, I can get quickly overwhelmed and have no idea where to start. And I try and do everything at once. But when I zoom out, when I look at the math, the actual numbers in my business, and I see what tasks have the biggest impact, I see that at least for my business, it's creating this podcast. It's being a guest on other people's podcasts. And it's teaching or coaching in other communities. And it's staying on top of the latest research and concepts for my clients. That's it. This is the 20% of activities that make up 80% of the results in my business. It's not social media. It's not Facebook groups. It's not hanging out in my inbox. It's not making TikToks or YouTube shorts. Okay. These are not the things that move the needle in my business. These are the things that can easily take up 80% of my time, especially because they are not my strengths, but they only produce maybe 20% of the results. And this is really important to highlight because for other coaches, for other people in the entrepreneurial space, small business space, social media can be a huge component of their business. In fact, in my business mastermind for coaches last year, I was coaching someone who has such an incredible ability to sell her coaching with reels on Instagram. She is a natural. They are so fun to watch. They're super engaging. They're super creative. They also help spread her message as a coach. It is clearly an area of strength for her. 
And selling with reels on Instagram is a 20% that's creating at least 80% of her results, of her clients. It could be 95% with how much she has done. She's really good at it. So I offer that difference to reinforce that the 80-20 is a very personal balance, especially when we take into account our strengths, which again is why it's really important to get curious about your life and your current season and the goals that you are working toward. It's not something that we can swap out or see what someone else is doing and just assume that that's the 80-20 you should be doing. You want to give it some time and some consideration with what's actually going on for you and where you want to go. Now, Back in episode 166, this is about a year and a half ago now, which is kind of mind bending, but I did an episode called Effectiveness Versus Efficiency and the ADHD Brain. And in that episode, which I will link to in the show notes, I shared a quote by Peter Drucker. And the quote was, efficiency is doing things right. Effectiveness is doing the right thing. Efficiency is doing things right. Effectiveness is doing the right thing. When we can ensure that we focus on the 20% of our priorities that matter the most, and we do so by using our strengths, to me, that is the secret to peak effectiveness, right? The 80-20 rule teaches us that not all tasks have the same impact. And by identifying our strengths and aligning our activities with them, we can really maximize our impact and achieve some truly exceptional results. And we reduce so much of the executive function taxing, time-wasting activities that can drain our batteries so fast. So how do we do this? Well, step one is to recognize your strengths. Where do things come naturally? What are the areas that you easily slip into hyperfocus? What are the things that you feel extra energized when you're done rather than super drained and depleted? Make note of these different activities. From there, we can re-examine what's left on the to-do list and lean into the other labels of delegate and delete. Now, I know that most of us, like I said, can't eliminate or delete everything that's not a clear strength. Believe me, as an entrepreneur, I get it. I know there are times when we just have to wear all the hats. For the first few years of my business, it was just me. For the last few years, it's been me running the business and the amazing Yolanda creating all the beautiful show notes for you. As I'm recording this episode, I am finally in the process of interviewing different VAs so I can start delegating some of the work that's not one of my strengths. But this is five years in, okay? So I promise I get it. And if you're not in the space to delegate, there are areas that you might be able to delete, okay? This is why I'm not super active on all the social media platforms. It's just Instagram. This is why I'm not up on the latest social media trends or approaches. It's just an area that I decided to delete for this season. I'm okay with that. It's not my 20%. So with that, let's look more specifically at what it can look like for you, okay? Delegation can take on a lot of different forms. Maybe it's dividing up tasks to your colleagues on your team. Maybe it's outsourcing tasks in your business or tasks and projects around the house if you have the means to do so. Maybe it's the ever-increasing possibility of using technology to help automate some of those processes, right? There are so many opportunities out there for delegation. And if you look at it through the lens of choosing the 80% of tasks that only produce the 20% of your results, it can help you get a little more creative in how to delegate. And then there is the beautiful art of deletion. (laughs) Some tasks just simply don't align with our strengths or our goals. They're often the shoulds. They're the things that we think we should be doing or someone else said we should be doing them. And in those cases, it might take a bit of coaching for your brain. You might have to kind of muster up the courage, but this is the opportunity to let those things go. Free yourself from that unnecessary commitment to make room for what truly matters, to make room for those long game goals and your priorities and the tasks that actually align with your values this season. When we spend time on the tasks that align with our strengths and delegate or delete the rest, I'm telling you that is when magic happens. That's when efficiency soars, your effectiveness spikes, and we start making those results happen 
at a much faster pace, all of which is a big yes, please in my book. <laughs> okay. So we've talked about prioritization. We've talked about leveraging your strengths. Now let's zoom out and talk a little bit about how the 80-20 rule can really impact so many areas of our lives, way beyond just productivity and time management. I mean, it's a game changer for decision making, for goal setting, for our overall effectiveness generally. Okay. So for example, you could use this framework in the area of relationships. Maybe you apply the 80-20 rule to connections and you identify the 20% of the people where you often find yourself feeling the most joy and support and growth. How can you invest your time and energy in nurturing those relationships and minimize or let go the challenging, unfulfilling connections, the ones that leave you drained? You can think about it in the world of health and fitness. Right? How can we optimize that? How can we focus on the 20% of the actions that lead to 80% of your desired results? Whether it's getting enough sleep, managing your mind with stress and anxiety, eating the foods that feel good in your body, moving your body in a way that you love. How do we prioritize that 20% that produce the 80% of what we want and then allow for flexibility and moderation in the rest? And then also personal development and goals. We can apply the 80-20 rule to personal growth. We can identify 20% of the habits or the activities or the skills with the most significant impact on your growth. You can prioritize these activities. You can dedicate time for learning, for reflection, for growth in those specific areas. Now, <laughs> it just seems like a good time to remind us all real quick to be on the lookout for rigidity in our thinking here, okay? Remember, the 80-20 is not about strict adherence to a very fixed ratio. It is about prioritization and focus, but also staying flexible and adaptable to your unique and often changing circumstances, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, the last thing I want to explore today is adopting the 80-20 mindset for long-term success, okay? So let's talk about mindset. Just like learning how to work with our ADHD brains, it's not just about productivity strategies and tools. It is also an important mindset shift that allows us to really redefine how we approach our goals, how we make decisions, and how we approach our overall perspective on life. Now, for the sake of time, we're just going to go over these briefly to my clients. Of course, we can dive into this much deeper on our calls, but for now, here are some of the key elements to embracing the 80-20 mindset. Number one, we want to focus on the impact and the results. So we want to shift our focus from being busy to being impactful. We only want to be busy being awesome, okay? Not just flat out busy. So we want to shift from being busy to being impactful. We want to identify tasks that have the highest impact on your goals and prioritize those and let go of the busy work and the distractions that aren't significantly contributing to those goals. Now, your brain will have something to say about this. It will tell you that you should be busy all the time. So this is a big shift. And we're going to have to coach our brains to focus on valuing that impact and that effectiveness over being busy all the time. Number two, mindset shift. We want to embrace simplicity. This is not always easy for our brains that thrive on a lot of different ideas. So we want to challenge ourselves to regularly visit the simplicity of 80-20. How can you simplify your life by decluttering the 80% that only brings you 20% of your results, whether it's literally decluttering in your space or whether it's reducing and decluttering your commitments or eliminating unnecessary projects and tasks and shoulds. By focusing on what truly matters, that 20%, especially when you lean into your strengths, you create so much more space for joy and fulfillment. Number three, we want to practice discernment and decision-making. So when you are making decisions, we want to use the 80-20 rule to help inform those decisions. We want to assess potential outcomes and prioritize the choices that actually align with your long-term goals and your values and avoid analysis paralysis by focusing on what matters most. You hear me say this all the time. What's the end goal? What does done look like? What decisions can we make to help ensure that done happens? 
And then number four, we want to embrace iteration. So the 80-20 mindset is about constant learning and growth and refinement. When we experience quote unquote failures, when we experience setbacks, we want to allow ourselves the space to feel the disappointment, feel the sadness, feel whatever those emotions are that come up. That's perfectly normal. Welcome to being human. And then we want to challenge our brain to find opportunities for learning and growth. We want to regularly evaluate our progress and seek feedback and adjust our approaches whenever we need to. What's working? What's not working? What have I learned? What do I want to try differently next time? Because when you step into that 80-20 mindset, you're going to find that you experience so much more clarity and focus. You're going to bring clarity to your goals that allows you to really focus on what matters. You'll notice enhanced effectiveness because you'll be able to identify and prioritize the most impactful tasks for that increased impact. You'll notice an improvement in decision making because you're able to consider potential outcomes and which ones are going to create 80% of the results, the things you actually want. Easier decisions? Yes, please. And if you are ready to take these concepts and actually apply them to your life, I would love for you to join us in We're Busy Being Awesome. I genuinely believe that learning and implementing what we cover in this program, learning how to work with and support your brain going forward, this is the 20% that can create the 80% of the results you want. If you've worked with your doctor and maybe you're taking medication or supplements and it seems like something is still not lining up, you're thinking, I don't know, I just can't figure this out. I feel like I'm missing something. I know what to do. I'm just not doing it. The framework and the supports in this program are that 20% that can help you create the 80%. If you know that you're ready to prioritize what matters, to lean into your strengths, to create a schedule that actually works for your current priorities and season of life, We're Busy Being Awesome has your name on it. If you want proven approaches to move through procrastination and indecision and actually follow through on your plans and commitments so you can create more space for joy and laughter and play in your life, We're Busy Being Awesome absolutely has your name on it. And what's more, you deserve it. You deserve to have the supports that actually work for your ADHD brain. You can learn more and sign up through the link in the show notes or head to imbusybeingawesome.com slash group. Also, if you know someone who would benefit from learning more about the 80-20 rule and how they might apply it to their personal or professional life, would you be a rock star and share this episode with them? You can grab the link for the episode or snap a screenshot, send it to them in a text. Maybe you pop it up on your Instagram stories. This is such a great way to help get these tools to even more ADHD brains who need it. And I truly appreciate it. Until next time, keep being awesome. I'll talk with you soon.